If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and today we're so honored to have Derek Maines, who's the founder and the visionary and the thought leader who created Green Nurture. Welcome, Derek. Thank you for joining us today on Green is Good. Well, thanks, John. I'm glad to be here. Well, you know, Derek, you know, you, I, instead of reading your amazing biography, I want you to share with our listeners to start with your history in the Green Revolution. You, this is not new to you. You've already been heavily involved and in creating all sorts of differences and making the world a better place prior to Green Nurture. Share with our, our, our listeners a little bit how you even got to this point before you had this epiphany to start Green Nurture. Sure. So I've been involved in sustainability you know, from a corporate level for, I guess, about six years or so. Uh, a lot of times working with large organizations, Fortune 10, Fortune 1000 organizations on sustainability initiatives, a lot of that focused around extended producer responsibility. So who's responsible for something after it gets sold? And then uh, in addition to that, recycling initiatives. So uh, w- what happens to a product after I sell it? And, and you know, what's my responsibility in making sure that that product's been recycled? Got but it. my sort of Way back in the day when I went to, uh, to school, I actually went to ministry school. I was, I was studying uh, to, to go into that field, and that's where I really got interested in sustainability. It, it, it really sparked me that I thought, wow, we have a responsibility to protect this planet. And it, it really uh, came from that, where I started to get excited about sustainability and was just fortunate that about six years back was able to, to work into that field, and uh, it's been great ever since, and I've met a lot of great people and I've been very fortunate to make a, a big impact, you know, and be able to, to help people in, become more sustainable, help brands become more sustainable, and help them to become more aware that their products exist for, uh, after they're on the balance sheet. You know, they continue to exist in perpetuity, and they need to be handled and taken care of appropriately. So, when, you know, when exactly did you have the epiphany for Green Nurture, and for our listeners out there, GreenNurture.com, which is a great and wonderful website. When did you have this epiphany, and how long, for our, for our entrepreneurs out there who listen, and how long did it take for you to, like, put it all together and get it actually launched? Sure. So we formed the company in January 2009, and that was right after I sort of came up with this idea. And the idea simply came from, you know, understanding that companies were really good at external communication around sustainability. And from my experience, did a very poor job of engaging the people that collected paychecks to actually participate in that effort. And so it's taken a long time. You know, we're talking now, we're into 14, 15 months of development. And of course, when you first start out, you think, oh, I can push this thing out into the market in 60 days. And you learn very quickly that, that technology, although it moves at the speed of light, uh, it actually takes some time to get yourself up to that speed. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> to get things moving. So, you know, we did a lot with development. The product has developed over time. Um, we've been very fortunate to have some really smart folks that we got involved with that said, hey, look, we think there's an opportunity here, and we think we can develop this out. And instead of it just being one thing, let's, let's try to create sort of a turnkey application that helps companies deploy sustainability initiatives and helps them do it in less than 30 minutes. Well, and, okay. um, well wait, oh, so, so explain, where is, who is your, your, your typical client? Who do you want to, to get onto GreenNurture.com? Just so our listeners understand, from, from A to Z, we want to understand what is GreenNurture.com and who is it built for? Okay, so let me tell you the who first. Sure. I think it's any company that has a staff of 10 or more people. Okay. And we have been talking with companies that have 20 people, and we've been talking with companies that have 100 thousand employees okay and so it's really anybody that falls in that genre right we are a very turnkey application so in about 20 minutes you can deploy a sustainability initiative to the people inside your company that really harnesses their collective intelligence and gives them a voice and empowers them to find ways that the company can become more green and save save money because green usually goes hand in hand with that you know if we become more efficient uh, we're becoming more green, but we also are saving, uh, you know, resources. So the application really uh, helps become that sort of think tank that captures the collective intelligence of the employees through a social media platform and then rewards them because rewards are important. 
you and I, John, we're sort of tree huggers, so we'll do it because it's green. Right. But the average Joe out there is actually going to say, hey, what's in this deal for me? So, okay, before we get to the incentive yep. parts, which is, which is wonderful, so you're saying, in short, greennurture.com and the social application that it has can take a company and take them from talking a good talk into walking a good walk and make, the, make their DNA much more green than it historically had been. It's about culture with us. Okay. We look at it from a cultural perspective. Okay. Shifting a culture, and I can convince somebody to go turn a light off. Okay. But if I can change the culture inside the company so that when anybody leaves a room, they turn the light off, okay. that's a whole lot better than one single action. You okay. Know, it, it's about engaging the people inside that company to shift the culture into a culture that's one of of sustainability and just conscious consumption. I think we have a lot of people sleepwalking. You know, right. there was recently a Gallup study that says. 71% of the workforce is in some form of, of sleep while they're at work. <laughs> you know, right. they're, just, they're on autopilot. And right. waking, them up, waking them up and saying, right. hey, look, you can participate. You can be a part. You can have a voice. You can get a reward. And you can make an impact on the environment collectively is very, very important. Okay, so now break it down because you're a great public speaker, and I know you're on the road a lot speaking and giving and sharing your views on this. So tell, tell our listeners and share with Mike and I why it's so important to engage two things, both the company and the employees, and what's in it for the company when you're selling the company and what's in it for the employees when and you're selling the employees on joining in to your greennurture.com platform. Yeah. So I think, first off, what's in it for the company? Well, I think there's a couple of different things. Okay. Number one, cost savings. Yep. Uh, number two, brand recognition as a, as a greener and des more desirable brand. People are looking for that in the, in the companies that they frequent anymore. Um, I think increased productivity and profitability are very, very important. Gallup's Human Sigma Study, which is a book that was written a couple of years ago, says that companies that have engaged employees grow earnings per share two and a half times faster than their competitors. So getting people engaged, getting them in a process is very important for that company. You know, having people there that are actually thinking about ways to move the company forward is really important. So to the company's per or to the employee's perspective, the benefits can be multiple. You know, certainly they can get a reward. Uh, they also feel like they're empowered, which is important. We've probably all worked in jobs at some point in our life where we knew we were just a cog in the machine. Right. <laughs> we had no voice. We had no ability to share our ideas. So just giving people that ability to share their ideas makes them feel wanted, increases their retention rates, and also it helps them feel like that there's a culture and a community inside their company. Um, so, so people get excited about that. When, when you give people and you empower them, what tends to happen is they tend to become more engaged. And that interaction goes beyond just sustainability. It goes to my interaction with customers. You know, we've probably all been on the phone with a customer service person who's having a bad day. Right, right. <laughs> it's apparent very quickly right. if they're not engaged in their work. So really creating that culture inside that company, I think, just benefits everybody. It makes the company more profitable, which gives more job satisfaction and more job security to employees. And it helps the company really become more competitive in today's market where uh, people are looking for this kind of thing. So, so okay, so you got on, on, on the company side, we got cost, brand recognition, productivity, and profitability, all great things, all what Mike and I talk about on the show with our guests, which went, with regards to the sustainability movement, hit all the, hit all the three basic um, modes, which is people, planet and profit. Okay, so now on the employee side, you have empowerment and engagement. Talk a little bit about the incentives. What's Because I'm the employee saying, what's in it for me? So what else, when you're talking about incentives, where else, are you, where else does your uh, social platform on greennurture.com allow the employees to get rewarded? So rewards are really important. Yep. You know, you can't, you can't expect everybody to do it just because it's green. You know, I always talk about I'm a tree hugger, but my brother, on the other hand, well, not so much. You know, right. so we've got to put the carrot on the end of the stick and coax him in the right direction. Right. So what we did is we we created a partnership with a company called Recycle Bank, ah. and some of your listeners are, are are likely familiar with Recycle Bank, but for those of them that aren't, Recycle yes. Bank has a technology that takes your blue bin at home and replaces it with one that has a radio frequency identification chip. Right. So it has a, a little. Uh, microchip in there that every week when the garbage truck comes past, it picks up your recycling, weighs it, and instantly deposits points for you that are then available for you to redeem at thousands of retailers nationwide. So we piggyback on that system and use the exact same currency so that people at work can earn these points for the actions that they do. They put in their idea, they vote on someone else's idea, they comment on something, they participate, and they receive points. 
that they then can take out and redeem at these thousands of retailers for products they buy every day. You know, not every product, not everybody shops at Whole Foods and buys Kashi or whatever it is. <laughs> but, you know, some people Good like point. Omaha Steaks. So we've got to <laughs> give them the, the incentive that fits their personality and where they are. That's brilliant. By the way, wait a second, Derek. But do they need to then have that uh, tag put on their garbage can if they if they're part of green green nurture and part of this recycle bank program that you've created, or can they uh, avail themselves of the points without even the tag? Yeah. They can avail themselves of the points just by using greennurture.com. So if wow. it comes into their community, all the better. They can get points in a couple of different ways. Wow. But if, uh, it, you know, let's say in Phoenix right now is doing a rollout of Recycle Bank. Right. But not everybody has it. Right. So we have companies that are starting to use it that are incenting their employees, knowing that somewhere down the line, when that comes into their employees' neighborhood, yeah. they're going to be even doubly excited to participate because now it's not just what I do at work. Now it's what I do at home as well. Wow, Mike and I are smiling here because we had the great CEO of Recycle Bank on our show already, and he did, and he was just wonderful and inspirational to us. And we love Recycle Bank, so um, we're so happy that you've made a partnership with them. So you reward them with with these points, and and they can actually have something tangible. So basically, you're incentivizing them for behavioral change. Exactly, and you're you know, finding that to be a successful mode. Great. I mean, uh, you know, Pavlov proved it with his dogs, right? <laughs> you know, if you give the right treat for, the, for a long enough amount of time, eventually right you'll modify the behavior and uh, you'll get what you want. You know, it's, Got it. it's that, sort of, uh, that, that, that sort of controlled response. And, and we're excited about that because it's sort of a, a, a way of thinking about sustainability that goes, you know, a lot of people put things on the roof, you know, solar panels or water cisterns. This is about getting inside people's heads. You know, right. and helping people become more sustainable. And that doesn't just translate to sustainability at work. It translates in every aspect of their life. You know, they don't just, they're not just green at work. <laughs> right, right. You know, they do the right things beyond that because that's that learned behavior. They've learned, okay, this is good. I get rewarded for it. So then they, they, they translate that into other parts of their life. So the recycle points really uh, bleed over into their home life, which then, of course, influences and inspires their children to start thinking greener, and, be, and green becomes just part of the DNA of the family and of the company. Exactly. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, I know, we, we know Mike and I have read a lot about what you're doing, Derek, and talk about your recent launch at Demo, and what did that mean, and how did your presentation go there, and, and what's happened since? Sure. So Demo, for anybody who doesn't know, it's a pretty elite tech technology conference that hand-selects about 50 companies a year that they bring in, and they allow them to launch live to the sort of media as well as uh, investors and, and the technology community, uh, particularly in, in, in California, although it's a global event. And we got hand-selected this year, first green technology company ever to be uh, awarded the opportunity to go and present a Demo, and it was a great experience. You know, you get six minutes on stage. Uh, in front of all the cameras and the people in the room, as well as hundreds of thousands of people watching globally. And you've got this six minutes to show off your, uh, your presentation and, and tell the world about what you're doing. And it was a great, great experience. We got just incredible response uh, from mostly large companies, you know, large technology companies, large companies that have, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of employees that really recognized what we did and said, look, every day they're out looking for needles in haystacks. You know, they've right. got uh, 100,000 employees, and we're always looking for the next most innovative idea. Right. But they have no tools or mechanisms to capture those things. Right. So when they saw what we did, they said, ooh, this is a way for us to find those ideas that we know are just walking around out there, but nobody has the ability to share them. So we've seen great traction in that. We've seen users coming into the system. We've seen municipalities really getting interested in saying, hey, is this a way that we could save taxpayer dollars? This nope. sound, now, uh, this might be a silly question, Derek, but, you know, this sounds so unique. And Mike and I have so many fascinating guests on our show. We've never heard of anything like this. Do you have any competition, and what does that horizon look like? Yeah. There is no competition right now. And we've, we have, uh, of course, filed some, you know, some, some patent protection to make sure that we can right. you know, keep those guys at bay as long as possible. Right. But, you know, we feel like it's a completely new market segment, and, and we call it micro-sustainability. Right. You know, macro issues are, are things that are handled by governments and large corporations. Micro issues are the things that you and I can do each day. So 
we, we feel like we're the first one. We haven't, we haven't identified any competitors whatsoever on the landscape, but certainly with the amount of attention that we're getting from media as well as investors, we know that it won't be very long. <laughs> well, we're gonna go, we want to go back to that, but Mike and I want, want to understand something. Let's, because we want the, the, our listeners out there who own companies or who are involved or are employees at companies to understand how they can avail themselves of your great services and your great site, greennurture.com. So Mike and I, let's just pretend for a second we own uh, a chain of, of 50 car dealerships called Mike and John's Car Dealerships, and we come on your site. How do you engage us, and how do we get involved? Sure. Right there on the site, you can actually read all about what we do. You certainly can pick up the phone and, and talk to us at any time. We're glad to explain what we do. But we also have a very turnkey system. So anybody can go to the site and get a free 30-day trial just by clicking on the, you know, I want to try it out button. And uh, they, they can go right into the system right there, upload their employee database directly into the system, set a date that they want to start the application to work, and bam, it's sort of the, the Ronco set it and forget it type <laughs> mentality. You know, we certainly don't want them to forget it. We want them to go in and reap the benefits of it. But they can deploy it very, very quickly and uh, get the employees engaged in sharing ideas in literally less than 30 minutes. You know, I'm on the uh, on the site right now, Derek, and I, I love the logo, which John has seen it before yeah, yeah. too. It's a it's a thumbprint that, that looks like a tree, yeah. and it's green. So I mean that that just speaks volumes. It's a great visual representation of what your vision for the company is. And as I'm drilling down through the site and just going through it, there's some great articles that talk about sustainability, the uh, Green Nurtures platform, and how employees, individual employees can get their companies involved. And I'm thinking of this as like a 21st century suggestion box. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, it, we call it a virtual suggestion box on steroids. It, it, <laughs> it, it is that and so much more because obviously what's in it for the company is saving money and becoming more profitable. That's one thing that can help, as you mentioned and, and addressed earlier in the show, uh, for making uh, for some job security for the people that are working there in a time of uh, excessive reductions in force. Everybody's worried about their job. Well, I mean, if the company is making more money than ever, chances are pretty good. If you had something to do with that by making a simple suggestion and saved the company money, you'll be rewarded not only with some job security, but uh, you can get the recycle points from Green Nurture as well as maybe whatever that uh, company uh, offers you as an incentive for a great suggestion. Absolutely. Listen, there are stories af- abounding right now in the employee engagement field of companies that have that have started to ask their employees for suggestions and have found multi-million dollar savings from a 19-year-old kid pushing a broom or found that the Uber influencer, there's a book out called The Rudolph Factor that talks about finding these sort of individuals inside your company that actually are Uber influencers. You know, and there's been stories of public companies that have found that some 19-year-old cashier <laughs> is the voice of the company. You know, these That's are the great. people that, that have the right personality and the right sort of, sort of know-how to communicate with people. And being able to identify those people is not only good for business, it actually is great for management. You know, you can look and say, hey, this is an up-and-comer, somebody who's influential in our company that actually has a voice, and look how well they communicate through the platform, and look how people engage with them. You can find those individuals and promote them through the platform. That's so brilliant, Dirk. Now, now Mike and I always talk about how the world truly is flat compared to when we were young youngsters growing up, and I just got back from one of these uh, international trips, and how every one is really you know going green and and wants to do more green things are you finding because it's a website obviously and you can reach everyone in the world are you finding interest outside of the united states in your wonderful product we sure are and you know from a business perspective right now we need to focus on execution here stateside but we've also already heard from a number of uh, of organizations uh, both in europe as well as in asia uh, where regulation is becoming more and more prevalent. You know, cap and trade is still in the talks here. In those countries, it's being demanded. You know, right. the regulators are saying, you either do it or you go out of business. And, and they recognize that, you know, capturing the power of what we call human sigma, right. you know, capturing the, those, kind of, those kind of ideas and engaging the cogs inside the organization, the people, to actually help the company become more sustainable are critical. I tell a story, I say, you know, a lot of people talk about LEED certification, and I say, if we build a LEED certified building in Fargo, North Dakota, and it's the most energy efficient building in the world, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and the guys in the dock want to have a smoke, and it's 20 below zero out, and instead of going outside, they open up the dock doors, it really doesn't matter how green my building is. <laughs> right, right. I've got huge gaping holes. So right, right. You've got to get the people to interact. You've got to make them a part 
of the process. It cannot just be the technology of, oh, solar panels will fix everything. Right. Solar panels are great. But if, if people aren't properly engaging with those things, it's all really irrelevant. Well, well that's important. So the, let's go back to that critical point you just made about uh, get the people to interact. We're down to the last couple minutes sure. of the show, unfortunately. But let's talk about, you know, the iPad just came out, and it's massively successful, Derek. What's in the future for GreenNurture.com in terms of new platforms and mobile apps? Yeah. So listen, I've got my iPad laying here in front of me. So okay. <laughs> I, I've got my <laughs> iPhone and my iPad laying okay. here because we are working on some of those things. Great. One of the things immediately that we saw when we came out into the market, right. companies contacting us and saying, not all my employees have web access every day. I have truck drivers. They're in their trucks. Oh. I have janitors who are working out on the floor. Really? So we are developing right now. We've got uh, some mobile apps in the works that will allow anybody with a cell phone to interact with our system. And we're still trying to figure out, is that via picture message? Is that via text message? Is that through a mobile site? But we're doing that on the phone side. As well as on the iPad side, we're looking at some things, and one of the things we do with our system is we have an assessment tool and a walkthrough tool that companies can use to find sort of low-hanging fruit. So how about we make an iPad app for that so that people can easily sort of walk out onto their manufacturing floor or walk around their facility and find these little individual things that can save them money. So that's next generation of our application and something that you'll be seeing this summer is really a, a focus on mobile because people aren't always, we've got to go to where the people are all the time. And everybody's got their phone all the time, pretty much. Hey, you know, you're right, Derek. And, you know, we're down to the last minute, and you're, you know, not, you were green before it was cool to be green. Just and, me and Kermit for a while there, I think. Y- yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but, I, you know, you're also a great entrepreneur. So, in the last minute, give a couple of one or two pearls of wisdom to our, to the, to our next generation that listen to our show and download it from Apple iTunes or listening to it on our, on our Clear Channel Network. Well, give, give a couple of your, your pearls for the entrepreneur out there and inspire them. Yeah. So I would say the two things that I've learned over time and over multiple businesses, number one, you've got to be resilient with your vision. You've got to be able to see the horizon and you've got to just keep working towards it. No matter what the, side, the sidebar conversations are, you've got to know what the right thing is to do and how to move the company in that direction. Perfect. The second part of that is you've got to have advisors. And I actually have, I, I probably to a flaw have given up more percentages of companies that I've been involved to, to smart, smart, smart people, the smartest people I can find, I want them in my boat. <laughs> and I'm willing to give them a, you know, a piece of my company for a piece of their time. And that is extremely valuable. Too many entrepreneurs are too focused on, I have to have 100%. Right. Heck with that. I would much rather have a few percent of a billion-dollar company than 100% of absolutely nothing. Well, so, well, find the smart people, engage them, get them involved in your business. Well, Derek, you know we're going to have you back in the future to tell about how wonderful and how large GreenNurture.com has grown. For all our listeners out there, go to GreenNurture.com, show your boss, and use it and, and get it involved with the companies that you're involved with. Derek Maines is CEO and founder of GreenNurture.com. We're honored to have you on Green is Good, and you are living proof that green is good.